Today I'm going to make this cherry tabletop. And the first thing in this project was to make the template. And the template's a, it's a really good thing to do because you get an idea of how big the table is going to be in the room. And once you have the template, that also helps when you go to lay out your boards before the glue up. I just want to get down in the camera here. Now, one of the most important things in a project like this is to pick your lumber. You're only dealing with, with the surface. That's the most important part of this project. So I really wanted to put a lot of thought into how the boards lined up. So the way that these boards will be joined is they'll be joined at the sapwood. And what that should do is hide the seam and give this sort of a live edge feel. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to cut this board in half and flip it over. So I've got a sap line here and then a sap line here. And then on the outer sides of the table, well, they'll probably uh, not have any sapwood and hopefully I can get a pretty close grain match. Okay, well, I've ripped all of the boards to width, and then I ran them through the joiner again just to take a little bit off, really just to have a nicer glue edge. Now, the next step is to trace the circle on the boards. I'll do that with a white chalk pencil, and I like to do that because when I mark for the biscuits, I want to make sure that the biscuits aren't too close to the edge because I don't want to hit one when I cut the shape out on the bandsaw. And now I'll mark the boards in the order that I'll put them together. And each one of these marks is an indication line for the biscuit joiner. And I like to use a biscuit about every, I'd say 10 inches. Now I'm ready to start gluing the top up. I've made sure that I've got my clamps ready, I've got my glue, and I've got some water so I can clean up when I finish gluing the top up. I've also got glue blocks. It's good to have glue blocks for when the clamps are on top of the table. It's not too heavy, but okay. and so it's going to be upright. What do you mean? Up like this. There you go. That's fine. And then you're, you're hanging on the table, so you're going to have to lift a little. All right. Super. Thank you. Okay. Well, now I've got the top glued up. And whenever you glue something up, you really have to have a plan. In fact, I, I knew that Walt would be home from school around 3 o'clock, so I waited on this. And it was good because I needed that extra hand. Now, the, the difficult thing about gluing something up is you have to work fast. So if you don't want to be as stressed out, you could glue the top up in two pieces and then join those two pieces to make your, your table top. But I wanted to have this finished so I can come in and work tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll come in, take the clamps off, cut the circle out, and start to shape the top.
Well, I came in early this morning. I unclamped the tabletop, gave it a quick sanding, and now I'm getting ready to cut the circle. And basically what I've done here is I've got the template. I've put it back on the table. The tabletop is now upside down. And now I'm going to use the compass that I used to make the template. And I'll put the point of the compass into the center of the circle. And the center was made when I originally made the circle. So now I'm just going to tap that with the hammer. Now I'll put the pencil back into the compass and trace the circle. Now ultimately the size of the circle will depend on how far away the point is from the blade because I'll spin the whole tabletop on that access point. But I wanted to have the circle in place so I could get the edge of the tabletop right up snug against the blade. And I'll do that first by trimming to the line with the circular saw. I've got the tabletop up on the jig, and this took a little work to get to where I am right now. And if I get a perfect circle on this tabletop, maybe I'll do a short video on this jig. So let's hope for the best and see what happens. All right, well that worked out pretty good. And the next step is to shape the bottom. I'm going to drill a hole in my compass three inches from the edge of the table and make another circle. And that's basically an indication line. I don't wanna go past that line when I'm shaping. And what I'm trying to do is when you look at the tabletop, it will appear to be about a quarter of an inch thick and just give it a lighter feel. And I'll also want a reference line on the edge of the table. Okay, well after about five or six hours of shaping and sanding, I'm ready to finish the tabletop. I brought it to the upstairs of the barn and I'm going to use an oil-based polyurethane. And I'm using an oil-based polyurethane because I want a really strong finish. And the idea here is the table can be used and we don't have to worry about it too much. And if maybe every year or two, I can lightly sand the top, put on a coat or two of water locks, and that'll bring the tabletop right back to life. It's gonna take a few days to finish the top. And once I, I'll take some video of that and I'll put a link on the screen when that video is done. Uh, and I'll also show you the table base. I may have to modify the table base because it's, it's a little small for this tabletop, I think. But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Yeah.